What's up guys, it's Chi again and you're all welcome to another knowledge field Chi analysis lesson. I'm super excited to introduce you guys to this topic, computation of support reactions. I'm going to be teaching you guys how to compute support reactions which includes how to take moments. As you can see, we have two questions here. The first diagram involving a point load and the second one involving two point loads. So we're first going to solve the one with one point load, then move over to the one with two point loads. In computing separate reactions, the first step to take is to draw the free body diagram of the structure. You only draw the free body diagram if the question wasn't given in the free body diagram form. Well, if it was given, then there's no need to draw the free body diagram. So we're going to see this question is not given the free body diagram. So first thing, we have to draw the free body diagram. Now, a free body diagram is simply a sketch showing the physical conditions of a problem. This is a simply supported beam with a concentrated load of 20 Newton, which is also called a point load. You look at the diagram, it has a roller support and a hinge support. A roller support which has one reaction and a hinge support which has two reactions, which are horizontal and vertical reactions. So drawing the free body diagram, we we'll first of all draw the beam, which is a straight line. We place our point load, which is 20 kN. Then we place our supports. All supports are assumed to be in tension, except proving otherwise. So we're going to draw this as supports A. This is how supports are represented. Supports RA, there's reaction at A. Then for the other end, we have reaction at B. Since it has two reactions, which is vertical and horizontal reactions, we're going to have this vertical reaction, which we know as RBY, because Y represents vertical. Then we have the horizontal reaction, which is RBX. So these are two reactions for the hinge and this is one for the ruler. So with a span of four meters, which is divided into two meters, two meters. So this is what we know, or rather what we refer to as a free body diagram. So after achieving the free body diagram, the next step is to use the equations of equilibrium to determine the unknown reaction and you recall that we have three equations of equilibrium we have summation f of x must be equal to zero summation f of y must be equal to zero and summation of m must be equal to zero so firstly you start with summation f of x and summation f of x simply means horizontal forces if we look at our diagram we can see that we have just one horizontal force which is rbx and summation of horizontal forces must be equal to zero since we have just one horizontal force we're going to write rbx is equal to zero now this is why most times it is usually neglected because it's always equal to zero since it's just one horizontal force okay so um moving on we're done with summation f of x, moving on to summation f of y equal to zero. This simply means summation of all the vertical forces must be equated to zero. Looking at the free body diagram, we have three vertical forces. One is the RA, the 20 kN point load is also a vertical force, and the RBY is also a vertical force. Now another thing to note in summation of forces, forces acting upwards are treated as positive forces, while forces acting downwards are treated as what negative forces. In summing the vertical forces, we're also going to be putting that into consideration. So summing all vertical forces, we have RA, which is a positive force, write it down as RA. The next vertical force is the 20 kN point load and it is a load which is acting downwards so it's treated as a negative force. So since we are summing all the moments, we'll have Ra plus. Since 20 kN is a negative force, we're going to write minus 20. Then moving on to the last one which is Rby. 
it's acting upwards meaning it's a positive force plus rb is equal to zero so we can rewrite this equation as ra minus 20 plus rb is equal to zero collecting like terms would have ra plus rb is equal to 20 kilonewton we can have this as our equation one so now that we're done with summation f of x summation f of y the last but not the least summation of moment must be equal to zero now i'm going to teach you how to take moments so you have to listen carefully to this part just a quick message don't forget to subscribe to my channel and like the video and drop your comments so moving on we have moments moments is simply um the product of a force and a perpendicular distance from the turning points to the line of action that's what moment is so when taking moment, you can either take moment about support A or support RB. You can take moment about any support. So if you are going to take moment about support A, meaning you, are, meaning you are going to end up achieving the value of RB. If you are taking moment about RB, you are going to get the value of RA. That's how it works. Now another thing to note is when taking moment about a particular point all the forces acting about that point tend to zero yeah so if we're going to take moment about ra that means ra will tend to what zero same thing applies if we are taking moment about rb rb tends to zero so we're left with just two forces ra and 20 kilonewton so Taking moments about RA, about suppose A, are going to write summation of moments about A will be equal to what? Zero. Now, since we're taking moments about A, meaning RA tends to zero, we're left with two vertical forces, which are 20 kN and RBY. We also have to know that moments could be clockwise or anti clockwise. clockwise means positive and anti-clockwise is treated as well negative so i'm going to be showing you how to identify clockwise and anti-clockwise moments so let's start with taking moments about point a if we're taking moment about point a remember moment is a product of the force and the perpendicular distance now if a force is vertical the perpendicular distance is horizontal that is making 90 degree that's what perpendicular stands for it's going to be at 90 degree to the force if the force is horizontal perpendicular distance is what vertical so now we can see that this force is a vertical force meaning perpendicular distance is going to be what horizontal now moment is a product of a force we already have a force 20 kilonewton and the perpendicular distance we know that the perpendicular distance is from the turning point till the point of action since we are taking moments about ra this is our point of action okay this is our point of action and since we want to take moments from 20 kilonewton this is our turning point now since ra is here 20 kilonewton is acting downwards hence it's going to come in this manner and this is also known as clockwise because this is how a clock moves in this manner so this is a clockwise moment so we're going to write down 20 times the distance which is 2 meters which is the distance from 20 to the point of action okay since we are done with the 20 kilonewton force we move over to the next force that we have which is rby now rby is acting upwards and you recall that our point of action is RA, so it's going to act towards RA, which is going to go in this manner. So it's going to be RBY times the total distance, which is the distance from RBY to RA, which is 2 plus 2, that is 4 meters. Now this is an anti-clockwise moment, because it's moving in the opposite direction of the clock. And anti-clockwise moments are treated as negative moments 
so we have minus rb times 4 and summation of moments must be equal to a 0 so rewriting this we have 20 times 2 is equal to rb times 4 so we have 40 is equal to 4 rb you divide both sides by 4 so you have rb is equal to 10 kilonewton so now that you've gotten the value of rb you substitute it into your equation one you substitute the value of rb into equation one and you call that our equation one we had ra plus rb is equal to 20 kilonewton substituting rb we have ra plus 10 is equal to 20 kilonewton so you have ra is equal to 20 minus 10 you have ra is equal to what's 10 kilonewton so there you have the value for RA and RB. RA is equal to 10 kilonewton and RB is equal to 10 kilonewton. So that is how to compute super reactions for a single point load. The same thing goes for two point loads, okay? So it's as simple as that. I'm going to explain in the one for the two point load. This is going to be a lot easier since you now get the concept in my next video and that will be all for this lesson guys remember to subscribe to my channel like the video and drop your comments in the comment section if you have any question any question at all regarding what we just treated in this lesson you are very ready to drop your questions in the comment section thank you very much see you in my next video